Hey, welcome to Cafe Maddie. My name is Maddie, and you're tuning into an emotional food podcast series where you send me an order in story form, and in return, I cook something customized and delicious for you. Today, it's a bit different from our usual episode. First off, I'm recording from Park City, Utah, instead of my New York apartment. I came on a little trip out here for the week with some of my friends, and we skied here for a few days, and today is a rest day. So right now, I'm just sitting in the bed of my Airbnb room. I'm all comfy in my sweatpants, in my favorite t-shirt, fuzzy socks, and the light is spilling into the room from the window. Gosh, it's really sunny here in Utah, which I didn't expect. And I'm using my cheap lavalier mic because I couldn't bring my big mic. So excuse the sound quality. It's not as full as my other mic. Or maybe you prefer this. So let me know in the comments of the YouTube video how this sounds for you. Also, this episode is a part two of episode three, the last one, which was titled Why You Should Touch Your Axe. In episode three, we had an anonymous customer send in an order about missing his ex-girlfriend a whole year after the breakup. And in response, I made one of my favorite comfort foods, okonomiyaki, with tteok. So I named it tteokonomiyaki. And my take was that, yes, I think you should hit up your ex if you're missing him or her even after a whole year. But of course, I gave a little guideline under the five-point guide that I talked about in episode three. If you haven't already, give it a listen if you want, because I did suggest a very unpopular advice of getting back with your ex. And it could be a little bit misleading without the context. Anyways, you guys, thank you for coming to Cafe Maddie. Take a seat. You guys are in for a treat. Wherever you are, make yourself at home. And let me take your order. So I asked everybody to share their response in the comments on the YouTube video. And I read every single one. And I'm really glad I did this because we got some incredible stories and I wanted to share some of it with you. You know, sometimes we get such a small sample size of life, including the one we know best, our own, and basically the handful of lives of people around us. Well, unless you have more than a handful of close friends, which I don't. So I think it really helps sometimes to hear about some different stories from different lives. And that's why I wanted to do this little outtake video. But before we start, out of all the comments and messages I got, I was so happy to see the message from our customer. Shortly after the episode went live, I got a message from him saying, I'm going to expose myself because I love the episode. This was my story and for some more context, which makes the recipe even more fitting, my ex is Japanese, so often we will make okonomiyaki together. <laughs> Thanks for letting me be your customer. I absolutely love this so much because sometimes when I post my episodes, I never know if the person writing to me will actually see or listen to my response. So this is quite special and a very interesting coincidence as well. So for our dish today for this part two video, I'm not going to be making something in response to anybody in particular, but I'm going to make something to share. We'll be making a big pot of Japanese curry with rice with some katsu for us to share. So, katsu curry! And instead of showing you this time, I'll be treating you with some yummy cooking sounds that you're gonna love. Okay? So, let's start by chopping up some veggies. I'm going to be chopping up some carrots, onions, and potatoes. Now we're going to throw it all in a pot with some water, add the curry cubes, and let it all boil and simmer for a little bit. And shall we? Let's read some of the comments. First, we have our story from username Get Dim Sum. And he said, I think I've only reached out to an ex once after college. We had a very turbulent relationship overall during freshman or sophomore year, both parties at fault, and honestly, we ended on pretty bad notes. I was so head over heels for this girl, and going through the breakup really messed me up emotionally. 
Even if we were in a similar friend group, I decided to give her some space to heal. I think we didn't talk for about five months or so, and even after we started talking again, with the intentions of being friends, I just didn't feel the same. Even though I still felt a certain way about her, I could tell in both of her demeanors that we'd be better off as acquaintances. So we left it at that and honestly didn't really talk at all for the rest of college. After we graduated, I still kept thinking about her from time to time, but not like in a romantic way, more out of a curiosity to see how she's doing after all this time. After all, we were both going through a lot of personal issues during college. No matter what had happened between us, I truly did just want the best for her. And after finding out how great she was doing post-graduation, I honestly felt at ease with her breakup for the first time. It's been probably a few years since then, um, but I can say reaching out did give me some closure, even if in the end it wasn't meant for us to be good or close friends. Get Dim Sum also said, your podcast just really brought me back to that time. I'm in a good place now, so all is well, and I do think your rule number four is so, 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 so important. Knowing your intention of why you want to reach out to them again is such an important factor deciding whether you should again. Mine was for closure and to see if the friendship would work, and I did end up at least getting closure. So that's one of the first comments we got on the video, and it was really good to hear from Get Dim Sum his experience and how he was glad that he reached out, at least to find out whether he could be friends or not with her. So yeah, I think it's true. Once you have your intention set, which was number four from my five-point guide, whether if it's you wanting to be friends or if you want to get back together, it's always better to give it a try. Well, because it'll do one of two things. It'll help you move on or get what you want. Except, you know what's dangerous? Right after my breakup, or one of my breakups, I once psyched myself into thinking that I was ready to be friends with my ex. It was maybe a few weeks after the breakup or something like that. And denial is a crazy thing, guys. I was so in denial of the fact that I missed him so much that my brain said it was a good idea to try everything to be friends. So yeah, watch out for your brain shortly after breakups because they can be lying to you. Erica Moon says, My first two serious relationships, I gave it another go. The first one, I'm grateful we gave it a try and I would say that in some ways, I still love him. The love now has grown to more of a respect and wishing them only the best in life. The second one, I don't think it was a great idea and that's fine. Mistakes are meant to be made, and I learned a lot from both. Wow. So we have a second person who looks back at her ex and wishes them only the best. I think I understand this kind of respect and love where you're totally just okay wishing them the best, but only from a distance. And I love what Erica said. Mistakes are meant to be made. Username Ajeng says, What if it's already been eight years? and somehow I'm still thinking about him. We haven't met for a very long time and I don't think that I still love him, but the fact that I can't start a new relationship is not okay. And I think I need some kind of closure from him, but I think it's too late. It's been eight years for even just a simple closure. I guess I'll just have to be stuck to the idea of never loving again. Well, first of all, thank you for being honest and vulnerable here. Eight years is a long time and it's going to be even kind of like hard to bring up to your friends that you're not over someone for eight years. And I totally understand where Aljing is coming from, where she feels like it's been too long to even reach out for any closure. But um, I actually want to answer this question with another person's story. And this is a comment from Christina Ebersole. She said, 10 years ago, I was in the craziest relationship ever. We were both in the military and we loved each other so much to the point where it was probably unhealthy. When he got transferred to a different base, he called and broke up with me over the phone. I was devastated. A few months later, I got out of the military and I headed home. But I couldn't stop thinking about him. 
no matter how far away I drove. A month later, I wrote a letter telling him everything I was feeling, how I thought of him and that I wished him well for the future. I sent it and experienced some sort of closure. But a few days later, he called me and said he read my letter. And can he come visit? So he drove three hours to my doorstep to hug me and told me that he missed me. And then he drove back three hours more to the base for work. Ten years later, we're happily married and still crazy in love with each other. Even though I doubted myself the whole time I wrote that letter, my openness and my gesture of communicating with him opened the door for us to try again. Whew, I got the chills. I'm gonna read this again. My gesture of communicating with him opened the door for us to try again. Guess what a lot of heartbreaks comes from in a relationship? Holding back and turning away with things unsaid. And what I love what Christina did here was that she was one, respectful. Once she was broken up with, she respected his decision. She didn't bombard him with calls, show up at his door, send him a million letters, but she took it all in and gave it a few months, even if it was really hard. And then after four to five months, when she confirmed that her feelings weren't going anywhere, she wrote an honest letter, open and honest. Not everyone will have a beautiful and amazing ending like this, but I just hope you aren't missing the timing because you just never tried sending that letter or sending that text. So even if it's been eight years, who cares? I hope this somewhat answers you, Ah Jing. At this point, should we check in on our curry? All right, it's looking great. We'll give it a good stir. And that's smelling amazing. We're gonna let it simmer even more. And let's get started on the katsu. Here I've breaded some chicken breasts, you know, dipped it in flour, egg, and pinko breadcrumbs. And once the oil is nice and hot, we're gonna gently dunk them in the oil, one by one. Ah, oh, listen to this sizzling, guys. And after a few minutes, I see the katsu turning golden brown. We're gonna flip it. And once it has a nice even color, let me just fish it out. And we're gonna let it rest on a rack. And while we fry the rest, let's come back to our comments. We have another comment and story by Luna Healy. It says, two years into my relationship, my boyfriend broke up with me. We hadn't been doing well. We weren't on the same page, but I was so heartbroken. We didn't speak or have any contact for six months. I started dating after that and I was starting to feel myself again, but I still missed him all the time. After another six months, he contacted me and told me he was completely in love with me which he'd never said to me or anybody else before, and that he needed time and therapy to get on the same page as me. He knew that I might have moved on, but he took a risk to tell me how he felt. We started slowly dating again, but I could feel the difference in our interactions. We're celebrating five years next month, and we're getting married. First of all, Luna, congratulations on your wedding, and thank you so much for sharing. Reading this reminded me of one of the messages and stories I got on Instagram. So the other day I took a poll on Instagram and asked if getting back with your ex was a good idea and 90% of you said it was a bad idea. But Elfie with the handle Elfie.beaut, B-E-A-U-T-E, said, I would recommend only if you've taken the time to grow up separately. In 2007, I broke up with the love of my life because I was under depression and I had a lot of problems to deal with. And personally, I felt like I didn't have anything positive to offer. And he deserved to be happy, so I broke up and hoped that he would have all the love that he deserved, even if it killed me inside. And I took time to heal from my childhood traumas. 
I had other lovers after that, but I never forgot about him. And in 2013, we met again. And we were lucky enough to be both single and still in love with each other. And now we're married and we have a daughter and I've never been happier. Oh man, it kind of broke my heart a little bit at the part where you said you broke up because you felt like you didn't have anything positive to offer. But it looks like whether you stayed with him through it or not, you kind of needed that time to heal and hash out some of your inner struggles. You know, sometimes you meet the right person at the wrong timing. And I've wondered this about some people in my life too, because some people literally would feel like someone I would have loved to meet and settle down with had we met some years later. Because, I don't know, we were too young or too immature, too inexperienced. And I've always kind of believed that right person, wrong timing is still the wrong person. And so I've let go of some people in my life, but hey, this could happen too. Not something I would necessarily count on personally, but I'm really, really happy, Luna, that the stars literally align for you in so many ways for you guys to meet an entire six years later and still be in love and make it work. Okay, we have another comment by Rudy Trevayas or Rudifer. I hope I said your last name right, Rudy. Uh, Rudy says, making the list is actually crazy powerful. And she's referring to the list that I mentioned in step one. Make a list of why you guys broke up before texting your ex. And Rudy says, it can feel extremely weird when doing it, but seeing the words on paper and facing the truth, it gave me a better understanding of how or why we broke up. Also, some insight to myself as a person then and wisdom to prepare for the future. I ended up not reaching out, but it gave me the closure I wanted without needing to actually talk with them. This is really, really true. I really cannot emphasize enough of the power of words, especially when they're written out. Literally, when you think of something versus when you see something written out and you see it for yourself, the truth sometimes kind of rings differently, even when you've thought about it for the same thing over and over for a really long time. So yeah, making a list itself, step one, can give you a lot of clarity where you don't even have to get to step five of texting your ex. And here is our last story by Wataru Ino. I hope I said that right as well. And I am going to read and close out our episode with this last story of Wataru marrying his first love. I married my first love. We dated when we were 15 and we met on a ski lift on a church ski trip. How crazy is that I'm on a ski trip right now and I'm reading this story? Um, we were both invited by a friend from school and fast forward four years, we are in college and it was a whirlwind of new faces and new people, new experiences, but we were in different colleges. So we had a lot of issues like temptation to explore different people and the questions of what if, what if this isn't for us? What if there's someone else out there? Because we were only 19. So I got my heart broken early in college. We saw and dated other people for six years. And just like our customer here in episode three, we were in each other's hearts in some form we wanted to deny. We would think about one another intermittently, but never thought it would be an option to see one another. We lived in the same city, but never ran into each other as we circulated in different groups of friends. Six years later, we ran into each other at a friend's birthday party. We happened to be both single, catching up and talking about family, and I found out that his grandmother was pretty sick and he had to fly back to Japan to see her. So I offered him a ride to the airport knowing how important she was to him. And before his flight to Japan, we talked about what happened between us and where we stood now that we were older and hopefully wiser, realizing there was still love there. There was still something buried under some resentment, guilt, anger, and sadness. But if we did try giving it a chance again, we asked ourselves, can we move past it all? 
So fast forward, I fell in love again and married my first love. And in her story, we found love rooted in chance, but also effort and patience. It is possible as we dance with the fates to make it possible. <laughs> Man, I keep getting the chills reading these stories. And it's crazy because it's not some feel-good rom-com stories, but these are real-life ones. But you know, hope you take this with a grain of salt because people were probably most likely to go into detail and tell a good story about a success story rather than something that didn't work out. So here we have our katsu curry. I'm going to scoop a heap of hot rice on a bowl. We'll cut up some katsu and then a giant ladle full of this delicious curry on top. Maybe one more. And bon appetit! I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Although the video element was pretty minimal this time, I really liked how the episode came out. I also love recording in this Airbnb in Utah and I just realized how quiet it is. No sirens, no traffic noise. You know how it is in New York City. It's not the most ideal conditions for a podcaster. <laughs> if you are curious about my 5-point texture X guide, go right ahead and listen to last week's episode, Why You Should Text Your X. If you'd like to leave a review of the podcast, I would love to hear it, so feel free to comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. And the podcast is on Spotify and Apple Podcasts under the title, The Cafe Maddie Podcast. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and give it some five-star reviews if you like this episode. And you guys know the usual. Like, share, and subscribe, and most importantly, turn on the notifications so you stay tuned for next Friday. Same day, same time. Special thanks to our music artist, Mr. Hong, for the custom track for our podcast. And every week, at the end of the video, I'll share music that I like that you might like too. So I'll link the playlist right here on the screen. And every week, we'll be building a playlist from this podcast. Thank you guys for coming and enjoy! See you next week!